years older, and KP, you're in a wheelchair, so you can just stay at your desk. And when I tell you to move, you just like kind of you can use your feet since you don't have it. I mean, since you don't actually have a wheelchair. Okay. So okay. Do we have someone who's leaving the classroom? We <coughs> don't. I'm just gonna point to you because it looks like we had many people in the classroom. <laughs> One person to reach consequence, so if you have something that could potentially reach consequence, thank you, Dan and Amanda and Monica, for doing that last class. So one person has to push the limits on her, and then also if you have too much going on, calm it down a little. Ready? Yep, go ahead. Okay, welcome, class. How's everyone doing this morning? Are we all awake? Oh. No? Okay. Can everyone move away from their desk? Maybe you can just move on out for a while. Can the rest of you stand up? Let's just. <laughs> Move our arms a little, wiggle a bit. Just let's wake up. <laughs> Steve, stand up. Let's wiggle. Get your energy out. Okay. Everyone good? Dan, stretch. Not too much crap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sit back down. KP, hey, can we um, not throw airplanes, please? Thank you. Okay. today that may be a little disturbing. So if they are, just please raise your hand and I can either turn the page or you can just go stand out there, okay? So please raise your hand. So does anyone know what these pictures might be? Dan? STIs. Very good. Do you know what the specific ones might be? That one looks like turkeys. Which one? This one? Yeah. Nope, it's not. Anyone no. else? But good try. It was a good try. Okay, is there are STIs that are very similar. How's uh, that? Want to take a guess? I see a baby. I see a baby, very yeah. good. What um, STI might that be for a baby? Like, yeah. what's, look at the eyes. Well, it's an STI. An STI, okay, so we went over this last in the previous class, sexually transmitted <laughs> infections. And last class, remember, we talked about the risks and the vulnerability. So this is our third lesson of our unit of sexual risks, okay? Um, so Mandy, do you have any idea what the one on the left might be? Um, very good, you're right, that was great. Do you, why do you think it's committed? Just any, you just took a guess? Took a guess? Okay. So, you're right, that's the media. We're going to go over the signs and symptoms later. Anyone want, uh, Niasha, want to take a guess on this one? Syphilis. Syphilis? No. It's actually very similar. This one's very similar to chlamydia. These three have something all in common that, that we're going to compare and contrast later on in the lesson. Monica, you had your hand raised? Is it gonorrhea? Yes. Very good. And then the oh, third one on your pre-assessment, a lot of you didn't know which one this is. Um, does anyone want to take a guess? Ashley? I have no idea. <coughs> it's, it, the uh, short term for it is PID. Anyone know? Not, most of you didn't know what PID stood for. No one really knows? Is it pelvic inflammatory disease? Yes, very good, Monica. Okay, great. So we're going to go through... Today we're going to talk about the symptoms, how the, these three diseases are transmitted. We're going to talk about the tests and how they're diagnosed. And then in our practice activity, I'm going to, Zach, can you stop talking and pay attention please? Um, in our practice activity, we're going to play a little game and kind of work on our communication skills. Um, and what I'm going to be looking for, we're going to have a checklist, I'm going to have a checklist, so I'll be looking for eye contact, volume, body language, and lastly, you're going to be writing in your health journal, and we'll be talking about how an STI could impact your life. So be thinking about these later on, um, you'll have a quiz at the end of class. So chlamydia, um, does everyone have their guided notes out? Can I see everyone get ready? Okay. So, for, 
your guiding notes. Yes, Steve, do you have a question? I think I accidentally gave one to both of them. Oh, okay, that's okay. Thank you. of you, there should be guide notes. Some of you have a PowerPoint. It got a little messed up when handing them out. So just take notes on them. The guided notes, there will be blanks. So, um, okay. So, chlamydia is, a very, is one of the most commonly reported uh, sexually transmitted diseases. And it's very popular. It ha it's, there's 2.8 million Americans that have it each year. So does anyone know what, why chlamydia might be a silent disease? Zach? Uh, I don't know. Do you know what like silent disease might mean? Doesn't talk. Doesn't, doesn't talk? <laughs> don't laugh, guys. Doesn't talk. Okay, that's a good guess because silent means you're quiet. That was no, that was a good try. Ashley? Um, you don't show symptoms. Very good. So, yes, very good. Chlamydia is one of the sexually transmitted diseases that doesn't show symptoms. It's a, like many others, they don't show symptoms. So that's a key thing to remember when we're talking about sexually transmitted diseases. Okay, we're gonna assume you went through your lecture. Okay. <coughs> okay, so for our practice activity today, we are going to play four corners. Has anyone played this game before? Yeah, Dan, do you, you played it? Mm -hmm. Do you want to maybe try and explain it? Do you have any idea, like, um, why I'm trying to set this when up? When you put four numbers in the corners, and different options for answers, and then you say, like, if you think this, go to this corner. If you think this, go to that. So we're, oh, that's, that's good. We're going to play it a little differently today. So I'm going to pick one person to come in the middle, and they're going to count to 15 in their head, and then they're going to hold up a number after they count to 15. So it could be one, while the rest of you are moving around to a corner. So uh, KP, can you roll out the in the middle, please? And um, so say the rest of you went to a corner. KP's going to be in the middle. And she's going to, once she counts to um, 15, she's going to hold up a number. Say she held up one. KP, I mean, Monica, can you please not throw a piece of paper again? If you do, um, there's going to be consequences, OK? Um, so uh, KP will be in the middle, count to 15. She'll hold up a number. Say she held up one. Say um, I'm the only person in one. She's going to ask me a question about something we went over today. And we didn't get through everything. Pretend we did. So like, you could ask, what are the three symptoms of chlamydia? OK? And then um, if the student say I get it wrong, then I become the person in the middle. If I get it right, you say it, uh, you say, and we go again. And what I'll be looking for is eye contact as a group. So like, I want to be making eye contact with KP. So does anyone have any questions before we get begin? Dan? What are we doing? OK. So, um, <laughs> so let me make this clear again. So one person in the middle. Dan, pay attention. Look at me. Make eye contact. One person's in the middle. The rest of you are going to be moving while she's counting. And you pick one corner. There could be four people there. Monica, front down. There could be one person, and as a group, you can answer the question, but you really are working on communication skills, okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So, KB, you want to be the person in the middle? I guess. Okay, so you're going to put your head down. Everyone else, stand up. See you would stand up, please? Okay, and when KB starts counting, start moving around the room, okay? I'm going to be having a checklist. I feel really responsible. Go ahead, start counting. One, two, three, <laughs> She's four, so five, five. You want to stay here? Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. Um, 
So did you hold up a number? Oh. Four? Okay. So ask these, think of a question that um, we discussed in class, or like, you know, how we just talked about, we talked about chlamydia, gonorrhea, and pelvic inflammatory disease. Uh, you can look through your guide notes if you can. So just think of a question off the top of your head. You want to do this while you're counting, and ask the group the question. Okay. Um, <coughs> chlamydia is also known as the talk to each other about it first and then come up with an answer, okay? Never? I don't know. A month? A few, let's say a few days, that covers our whole, days. the basis. <laughs> they said a few days after infection. Okay. Yes, and gonorrhea typically has no symptoms. Remember we talked about this? But there are um, a few, like, discharge, um, abnormal discharge from the penis or the vagina. Um, Good. So, Zach, will you be um, the person in the middle now? You can just either sit can I, can or I be with Zach? the desk out. Can I be with Zach? No, you have to do this by yourself. Are you, sh are you sure? Yeah. Oh. It's just an individual thing, But okay? we're best friends. It, but I'm sorry, not today. Oh. One person, Zach, yes, and then Monica. You, there'll be other activities. Okay, so let's start moving around. Uh, Zach, close your eyes, count to 15. Start moving. about what we talk at uh, one of the topics we talked to you about in class. Um, you need help. Yeah. You need help? Okay. So what I, about I could have helped him if I was in the middle. What about God do you want to help him out? Yeah. Okay, go talk go have a talk with him and help him out. What's up? What are you doing this weekend? Um, no, let's talk about the topic in class. So okay. uh, I'm gonna give you a topic. Gonorrhea. Ask a question about gonorrhea to Dan, okay? What do you want to ask? Uh, what's gonorrhea? <laughs> An STI. Okay, good. So let's everyone go back to your seats. We're going to pretend that we did that um, a little longer. And I want everyone to clear their desks. Nothing on it. The first person to do this will get three extra points on. Okay, uh, three extra points on their desk. Take out a pen. Mandy, I noticed you got that first. Very good. Okay, and I'm going to pass out the quits. Can you clear your desk, please? Put it next to there, and then I'll give you the Sorry, I took it back. Sorry, that was my fault. Wait, what are we doing? We're taking the quiz. So I want you to clear your desk.
I'm cheating. Okay. Kai joining me separately. You want to go sit there? Thank you. Let's keep our um, Miasha, Dan, can you please not talk while we're taking the exam? Okay, let's assume we aren't at the quiz. Okay. <laughs> so um, let's go over asymptomatic STI one more time. So what is it? Like, what are all three of these STIs that we discussed in class? What do they have in common? Uh, PP? They have no, or like the symptoms are not. Very good. So asymptomatic means that they're, the symptoms <coughs> aren't shown. So all three of these STIs, what are the three that we discussed today, Miyasha? Chlamydia. What's another one? Man, uh, Mandy, what's another one? PID. Um, good. What's that stand for? Malia, what's PID stand oh, for? Oh, I really need. Where do you have to go? Um, okay. okay. Can you take a next class, please? And come back as soon as you can. Okay, Steve, what is another disease we, uh, infection we talked about today? Miasha mentioned chlamydia, and PID was mentioned. The other one starts with a G. Gonorrhea, you're very close. Good job. Okay, so in your health journal, I want everyone to take out your health journal, and we're going to pretend that you went to the doctor or the gynecologist, and that you were tested for several STIs, and they found one. This is a hypothetical situation. You don't really have one. It's a hypothetical one. Um, and I want you to discuss what you would do and how would, you, how would you feel if you were told that you have an STI and you had no clue beforehand that you had one. Okay? Give her a hand. Let's see, is your quiz in here? I just need to see the quiz. You do a different uh, quiz for each person? Um, so what I did for the lower, I didn't, I put Steve's in there. For Steve, for autism, I did that, and then, I, yeah, this is the other one, but I highlighted, for the lower performing, I highlight three signs and symptoms and chlamydia, so that it was very clear which I was asking for. Okay. I said, don't Your skill assessment talk to us because you're doing that personally. Okay, so the... Skill assessment. I had a checklist, and I was rating them. So rating you guys. So make eye contact with people you're talking to. So if you were in a corner and the person was in the middle, I want you to make eye contact with the person in your group and with um, the person in the middle. And like I rated you zero percent, thirty percent, fifty percent, seventy-five, a hundred. And then volume. So when you're talking, if you're quiet, if you're just average, or if you were too loud. And then the other one was confident body um, language. So like, were your feet facing the middle person? Were you like, was your posture straight up and tall? Where were your hands, etc. So that was this for the CL four corners. She had a motivational tool too. What did she do for the motivational tool? Yeah, okay. Yep, three points for clearing desks. That, that's also number 17 for transition she used for transition. Dan? How is it a reliable uh, assessment if you're giving different kids in the class different types of assessment, different types of quiz? It's reliable because it's consistent. Consistent means um, that everybody has the same information. So you're still being tested on the same knowledge. It's just she's testing with uh, options for, for one student with blanks for one student and then like with full sentences. Okay. So it's reliable because it's consistent. Um, valid is just if the if she's actually asking questions where the and the answers are true. Yeah. So valid just means true. So yep. Very good there. So she did a lot in this lesson that you may not have seen but was actually written in the lesson plan going on here and I want to make sure that we, we talk about those things. So I'm gonna talk about those first. Some of the things that she did, how did she apply language function? Did anyone catch how she applied language function? Monica? Um, using asymptomatic instead of, I don't know. I was also going to say she used the STI names and so, also STI. Yes, the key thing here is that she made the students use the words, and the students had to use the words in a sentence, and the students had to use the word in the sentence as it applies in real life. 
So when you were playing the game, you had to answer the question, and that game hopefully would go long enough that at least every student had a question. <coughs> the, that was the only thing that you really need to make sure was, yeah. could there have been a student that never answered anything? You wouldn't have tested out their language function there. The language function isn't just that you put a word in your lesson, it's that the students are using the word in the way it's intended to be used. She did a lot of language function in this, in this game activity that she played. You might want to make it more the game more fun by having some form of competition going on, but I think okay. we had so many behaviors going, which is when you would have behaviors going right. on, too. Um, by implementing maybe some form of competition or something you might want to add in there that you guys can all think about when you when you practice that game enough and you've got the game down, then you can start making it more fun. Okay. All right, so she did a nice job with language function. Differentiating, can you explain how you differentiated? Um, so for guided notes, what I had planned on doing is for the lower performing students, I had the guided notes and the PowerPoint, which didn't end up happening, just from communication. And then for Steve, I just had a big PowerPoint, so because usually autism is not seeing well. And then for the quiz, I gave Steve a different quiz where he just had to circle the answers, like multiple choice. And then for the lower performing, I highlighted like key, the keywords, like I would highlight, you want three symptoms, and then I would highlight chlamydia, so that was like very visible for them. Okay, so she used differentiated on guided notes and quizzes. That would work in everybody's lesson, since you all need a quiz and you all need differentiated instruction. So like I said before, if you can think of something else to do so that we can all have different ideas, please do so. If you can't think of anything, please do what Amanda did, because this will work on all of your lessons, including for ITPA. I do want to clarify someone with autism. With someone with autism, they are smart. So you want to be very careful. You did attend to a few things with Steve as if he was not. And you want to be very, very careful that do not treat someone with autism like they have MR. Does everyone know what I mean by MR? Or cognitive disability is the, more, is the term that you should be using at this point rather than mental retardation. So when somebody has autism, they will get frustrated and they will also start to they'll make sounds because they're trying to express their frustration because they, they know stuff but they can't communicate. Also, they can see very well. So it's the communication piece that's the hard part. They'll have a very difficult time communicating. You did bring Allie into it. Again, nothing specific for her. So when the future people start teaching, you might want to even put in your lesson plan what you're going to tell Allie, or give Allie specific written instructions of exactly what you want her to do so you don't have to verbally take that away from your lesson. And she already knows what to do. Yeah, that was what the one I was talking about. Be careful of the, those kind of things. Like, can you go calm it down with a knee-jerk reaction? Like, you didn't know what you were going to say there, and you probably were like, oh, I should have said that right yeah. afterwards. You never want to yeah, you never want to treat a student like, go calm him down. So, like, he's not your problem. Oh, or that's the, a good thing, because it's, like, specific instruction. Well, no, it needs to be more specific and not uh, condescending. Okay, yeah. so not condescending. You don't want to treat your students with autism in a condescending way. That would be key. Keep in mind they're very smart, but they cannot communicate, and uh, it's frustrating to them when they get treated like they're like they're not very smart. On the front page, uh, object is very well written. The only objective that needs a little more detail is in your skill objective. Eye contact is self-explanatory. What was the other thing on your chart? Uh, volume. And volume is self-explanatory. Body language is not self-explanatory. When you were all being assessed on body language, did you know what to practice during the game? Did you know what she was grading you on body language? You probably could guess what she was grading you on eye contact. She could guess what she was grading you on volume, but you didn't know what she was grading you on body language. So she needs more information on what do you mean by body language. You did it when you said it to us. So take what's in your rubric, put it in your objective. Does everyone understand why she needs to change that objective? Just to be more specific. And it would help the students to know when you're playing the game, I want to see that you have you know proper posture or that you're facing the class or whatever it is that you, you chose. Let's go down the front page. Any nose there? Yeah, do you have anything? Um, I didn't know your answer. That was um, the, the chlamydia, the gonorrhea, the pictures. Okay. Kind of make you curious. Good. If her anticipatory set was the shake it up and energize, she wouldn't have been able to explain how that related to the lesson. So I put a yes and a no because I didn't know which one it was. So the picture one was. Yeah. Very good. That I just improvised because it seemed like it was less time. Very good. How does she do with communication skills? The only thing that she needs to work on, and it's probably because you're her peers, is when you attend to behaviors, you're smiling the whole time. So it's probably because they're your 
peers, but in your when you're dealing with your students, I want to see that tone change, and they didn't see it with these guys. So when you're practicing with us, try to practice changing your tone, even though we're your peers. Change your tone to stern, firm. How does she do with transition skills? Can you identify specifically what she did to make transitions quick? She had Ashley pass out the notes in the beginning. Yep, she had someone else pass out notes. What else? For the quiz, she was like, whoever gets a whoever clears the desk. That was a huge transition, and that was her motivational tool was the clearing of the desks. The other pieces were that she had everything printed out for you. She had she had directions printed out. That's transition saving time. Even though she had to explain it many times, you all did a nice job of not knowing the directions. And the um, you could see where it was difficult for you to orchestrate. Again, just like Zach, they put a lot of them on you, which should be a compliment to you. And you were still trying to orchestrate all of them at the same time. Nyasha, you were talking specifically to her. What was going on there? <laughs> I was supposed to act like she was um, my best friend and confide in here, so I was like gossiping with her. Okay, so this this is what I want you to I want you to nip that in the butt quickly. If you have a student who's like, oh, by the way, you know, I just wanted to tell you that when this this isn't the time, this isn't the classroom. So you say, Nyasha, you need to close that off. There was a lot going on there while you, when you were trying to attend to the game answers. Okay. So close it off, Nyasha. We'll talk about this at the end of class. I need you to play the game. Okay, if she you didn't did say that to me. She just let me finish my sentence. Yeah, okay. I let her finish talking before, and I said, let's talk about this after class. Good, good. So thanks for clarifying. We didn't get a chance to do an appropriate behavior. If we have time this class, I might have you do, do one. Okay. Who would you do it with? The behavior response? Um, I guess Monica was throwing papers. I saw that several times. I or KP. Or KP. Or KP. Yes. So Let's get KP next class. If we have time, we'll, we'll go through that one. And literacy and guided notes. What did you have on the back side? Anything she needs to work on? She did incorporate almost everything in there. That was very, very well done. A couple of things I want to add in there. Don't forget Madeline Hunter's on number 31. Leave the room if you're disgusted with the images was the way she attended to some of your needs. Uh, with Steve, he had some repetitive behaviors. You could attend to his needs by trying to give him a uh, place or a space that is less stimuli focused. Okay. You did tell him to sit down. That was attending to some of the needs that might have helped him. Uh, what else? Recognize what a student's daydreaming. First, tell me, who do you think was your daydreamer? I actually don't think there is anyone, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't so circle on no there. Who was the daydreamer? Mine was, um, I'm like paying attention, but I have no idea what's going on. No like, idea what's going on. Okay. Kind of and you did I attend like, to yeah. Zach. You also tried to attend to Monica's need to want to be with Zach by saying, go ahead and help him. And then we realized, oh, she's not helping him. She, You pulled that away. So you still tried to attend to that need, which was pretty good. You, did she catch up on all the students that left? One student left. Uh, we didn't really tag when she came in at the end. So put them in an A there. Malia? Um, when you choose the three students who have, like, whatever you choose, like, you have to specifically address that. I'm just going to open this one. We don't have real class today, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. So, when you have the three types of students, do I have to, you have to like, address it? Like, I was it? pregnant, but it was never, like, Well, in the, in the lecture that I, like, addressed, like, oh, like, if you're pregnant, like how it's transmitted, but we didn't get to that. So why don't we have you explain the three forms of diversity and what you did to explain okay. all three? So for pregnancy, like for each disease, I talked about how it's transmitted, how like the infected mother could be trans <coughs> it could be transmitted to the baby if it's your <coughs> vaginal birthing, and then there was like <coughs> preg uh, tubal pregnancy, where it's like if um, the egg is outside the fallopian tubes. So like talking about that, like there are some things how you should really tell your doctor if you have an STI and you're pregnant. Um, and then for the year. This is number 32, by the way, what she's saying. And then for the person that's three years older, I talked about um, how it doesn't, you can be, like anyone can be sexually active. Like it doesn't, like age doesn't matter. Um, but I, like anyone can get an STI if they're sexually active. Um, and then like I think there was an age for chlamydia between 14 and 25, I believe, I forget the exact age. Like between that age, like it's common for girls, young girls to get STI. So I like incorporated age. And then my last one was the uh, 
TP, like I had, I just like made the corners a little smaller so it's not like everyone, so it's not like go to this corner. I kind of made it more closer in the room so ah, she but wouldn't, see, but no one could, no one, no one noticed that. that. No, and we didn't, we wouldn't have known why. Right, so that was very good. So even as simple as just making the corners closer so that she wouldn't have a difficult time getting from each side in 15 seconds. If you do all play this game again, you really want to make sure that counter is not looking when they call the corner. Um, and then you might want to make it some form of competition to make it a little bit more fun. You have, I have a lot of other feedback you can read okay. on your own. They did a really nice job. Can we give her a hand one more time?